Hello and welcome to Simple Cryptocurrency News. My name is Claudio and this is Crypto Exchange, the channel where I do cryptocurrency news, reviews, demos, interviews and blockchain games reviews. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the latest updates that we've got from various crypto projects. What is the state of the market? Why has the whole market collapsed? What is actually going on? And we're going to be talking about a poll I made on my Twitter page about this and what people have actually voted for. So that's actually interesting because we do have the result in now. So we're going to take a look at that in a moment. We're also going to be talking a bit about China, China and Binance. Why is Binance investing in China? Is it a cryptocurrency company? What is it really? So you're going to find that out in the video too. And also, I just want to remind you that if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I'd really appreciate it and like the video if you enjoyed it. And of course, enable notifications because you need to be aware of when I upload the next video that may interest you so that you don't miss out. It could be an interview, it could be a tutorial that you may be looking for or maybe just a project update in general. Let's get right in and see what this is all about. So first we're going to be looking at the market. So Bitcoin actually took a big plunge. It's trading at $8,126 on average now down 4.5%, but it dumped to as much as 7,800 uh, yesterday. And actually today it has dumped to like 7,600, 7,650 before spiking back up uh, just above 8,000 as you can see now. So it's kind of maintaining that stability above 8,000, but it did retest the lows again below that. So could we see it go lower? Anything is possible. Bitcoin always does what it wants. And of course it drags with it all the old coins. So you can see it's a bloodbath here, right? All of these coins are suffering. Neo is trading at seven dollars and thirteen cents. He actually went below seven uh, when Bitcoin crashed a lot on the first day. Ontology fifty eight cents. So this is back to those prices at the end of twenty eighteen when it was extremely cheap and people got in and people were hyped and then the price spiked up to like 60 something cents I believe it was first then another spike to like 80 then over one dollar close to two dollars before retracing it, it kind of reminded me of what happened at the beginning of or not the, at the beginning but in um, in spring 2018 when ontology pumped basically from like one dollar uh, when it first launched on Binance all the way up to like $11.50, $11.60, close to $12, and then retracing all the way back. So this kind of reminded me of that moment that we've had. We've seen the big spike, the accumulation stage around the 50 cents area, to spike back up and then to come back down. So uh, yeah, I mean, people had their high hopes, had high hopes that the price is gonna hold, but unfortunately, cryptocurrency does what it wants. And it just shows you once again, it's proven once again, this is how it is and you got to be prepared for everything uh, and let's see uh, right so the biggest winners are loom network which i've heard of right i haven't actually reviewed this project it is ranked 92 though so not too bad i may actually get to it at some point because as you probably know i do cryptocurrency reviews uh, especially of the top 100 projects right abbc coin is interesting right i did think this was a pump and dump but it always seems to uh, bump and then retrace but it's always like 15% growth 15% retracement but it makes you wonder is it really a pump and dump just the fact that we're seeing this all the time I mean if it would have been a pump and dump it would have happened once and then maybe again in two or three months and uh, oh yeah and if you're interested in pump and dumps I did do a video it was actually an interview with Steve Good and Yuri Cataldo do check it out it was actually my last video the one from two days ago that I've done with them so do check that out. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it just seems a bit odd that it's a pump and dump. Just the fact that it's growing now. I'm going to stay away from it because it's not really on a lot of big exchanges. But obviously some people are managing that, right? Uh, right. And the biggest losers are Lam Lambda, Beam and Quant. And actually Quant is, is a really decent project. Maybe many people have been hyping it. Uh, because of their progress and I actually want to look more into it because uh, like I said I've only heard of it there are many of the top 100 projects which I've heard of but I've never looked deep into them to understand what it's all about so hence why I like to do these reviews because I also educate myself and also you the viewer uh, to learn more about them and again it is not financial advice or anything it's just basically to understand what's out there to understand what technology they're using like for example projects like IOTA are using a different technology than blockchain called DAG it works differently so things like that you know and the last toss as well actually is not doing too good one dollar 89 so oh quite painful for the last holders but 
Phantasma because you know I always check the price of that as well. 798 sats, 6.4 cents, holding quite well, only down 1%. It had a bit of a pump to over 7 cents because of the mainnet hype. So mainnet is around the corner, people want to stake, people want to hold. And actually the Phantasma community was extremely bullish even in even when the market crashed right because the sats value was holding quite well holding strong it dumped to like from 880 to around 680 690 and then it, it went right back up close to like 750 760 so yeah now it's it's gone back up close to 800 so it just shows you people are hyped about mainnet people are actually buying it because of mainnet because they want to stake and, and, and as you know you know cold staking is something good because you're not using up any any electricity you stake it to the smart contract and that's and then you, you forget about it you generate energy or the fuel token which is called kcal in this case but we're going to be talking about Phantasma news in a moment, but let's look at my Twitter page and this is the poll that I've actually done. So why do you think the market has crashed today? This was on the 24th of September, which was two days ago. 31% uh, voted backed dumping, okay, so that's what people thought. Uh, whale manipulation 27%, so close, people do think it could be a whale manipulating the price. It's just the fact that it was so volatile and swinging up and down as if it was an old coin with almost no liquidity. And when you think about it, Bitcoin has a lot of liquidity because it's on almost every single exchange out there uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency exchanges. Um, normal market conditions, this was kind of a joke, you know, and, and actually somebody commented here, which I found interesting, like normal market conditions and he was laughing, so... Uh, and 19% someone rich sold a bug again kind of like a whale or maybe just a person who had a lot of money a lot of Bitcoin decided to just sell it and forget about it for now or maybe buy back if it dumps who knows what their plan was 19% uh, thought that right this was just my assumption that maybe this was really the reason uh, so yeah 19% of the people actually 26 votes so we don't actually have too many votes uh, but yeah this is the video that I was telling you about cryptocurrency scams how to avoid them uh, also pumps and dumps with Steve Good and Yuri Cataldo so check that out if you're interested and probably the most important interview that I had this month and maybe since I started my YouTube channel I, I wouldn't have even expected or dreamt that I'm going to be eventually interviewing John McAfee and many people didn't even believe me many were like when I when I shared the link around like in telegram groups and stuff people were like no way that's fake that's not true until they actually clicked on it and they saw it and they were like whoa this guy really interviewed John McAfee that's amazing because you know my channel is quite small to be honest I'm trying my best to grow but it is quite small so it's a bit unexpected for her to see a small channel have the opportunity to interview a person like John McAfee who's a big name in the crypto space. So yeah, if you haven't already watched it, which I'm probably sure you did already, uh, but if you didn't, uh, I recommend you check it out. It's got a lot of comedy in it, right? A lot of comedy. But yeah, that's that about that. Uh, let's look at the news. So Chinese homecoming, crypto companies make their way back to Asia and it's more specifically China, right? This is focused on China and this is from Cointelegraph. Again, links will be in the description as well as the times, okay? So you can check those out. So they're saying here that basically Binance is going to be investing in a company called Mars Finance, which is a crypto blockchain data and news provider from Beijing. Okay, so why is Binance investing? And not only Binance, but there are other companies investing too. For example, Matrixport, which is a Singapore-based project. Uh, Seiyuan Ventures, I've never heard of them, but it's a Beijing-based venture firm. OKCoin, OK which is a trading platform. I have heard of it. Huobi, which I've heard of as well. And actually, Phantasma Chain were kind of hyping or tipping us that they may list on Huobi. So who knows if that's going to happen. Uh, maybe at some point, but yeah, they've also invested IDG Capital, a US-based venture firm. So yeah, basically Mars Finance is, um, is the brainchild of Wan Feng, which is a Chinese entrepreneur who has been active in the crypto space for quite some time. It's estimated that this digital data aggregation venture attracts a total of 124,000 monthly visits and ranks at around 70,947 in terms of overall web traffic. So quite a lot. So the question is, is Binance heading back to China? Well, not really because they're not opening an exchange there. They're just investing in this specific company. But maybe it's strategic because why would they invest so much? And actually they've mentioned here, right? Where did they mention? So yeah, they've, they've mentioned that 200 million is what has been invested in the, in the actual funding, right? This is the funding route. Uh, so quite a lot of money. 
So yeah, basically here in this article, I'm not going to go through the whole article because it, it will take some time to read it and you can do that too. Uh, but if you're interested, it's basically just talking about uh, the Chinese and are they really going to support cryptocurrencies at some point? Will the government do it? And actually one of the interesting parts here in this, uh, in this uh, news article is that what they're doing with Mars Finance is not really a crypto investment. Okay, so this is what Binance and the other companies are kind of doing. They're trying to invest in this company, which is not really a crypto investment, right? But they're talking about cryptocurrencies. This is the purpose of this company. So I think it's kind of to help with IEOs and stuff because they do say it here. It's more to control the uh, situation with the listings. IEOs, for example, especially those initial exchange offerings that it plans on listing on its platform in the near future. So things like that, you know, that's what Binance are pretty much trying to do. And apparently Binance have a relationship with the Chinese government. Okay, they do have some kind of link with the Chinese government. So that's actually a big plus because if they do that, then obviously they'll have the power, right? And, and Binance have a lot of power already, as you probably know. Uh, but uh, imagine the amount of power they'll have, right? It's just amazing. Like CZ is just you know going all around the world and trying to trying to promote the platform and trying to grow it so fair play to him for that uh surely maybe he, he doesn't do it in the right and the most legit way in many cases but the fact that he's going out there he's trying to promote cryptocurrency is a good thing because that will get more people involved in cryptocurrencies and then we'll see more people using cryptocurrencies hopefully uh, because if there are more exchanges out there more options for people to enter and exit as they want right freely then that'll uh, open the doors to many more people uh, even those people that may think they're scams right there are many people out there that think cryptocurrencies are scams and there are others that haven't even heard of them so that's that from the news about china let's move on and talk about the project update so that's phantasma chain i want to talk about first again the hype with mainnet we're waiting for that but the last thing we've seen is uh, Li Kai basically posting uh, information on the on-chain governance system, which we kind of knew about already. It's basically information, actually, let me delete this. So yeah, it's basically information on um, how to vote on the blockchain, things like that for block producers. Uh, they're gonna have some kind of poll where uh, people, depending on how much they stake and for how long they stake, will be able to vote. Uh, for block producers and for other sort of changes that may happen on the blockchain. So here's a diagram as you can see with new rules, block producers voting, majority, anonymity and popularity. So there's going to be, it's going to be divided into three voting categories like a poll. Um, so yeah, basically saying here next milestone is main at launch, which everyone's excited about, especially the soul masters, because as a soul master, as you know, as you very well know, you will be eligible besides generating the KCAL token, which is going to be the fuel token of Phantasma Chain. You'll also be generating soul every month. But of course, that'll be distributed once a month from the 125,000 soul uh, per month, which is divided across all the soul masters. And at the moment, there are apparently around 205, 206 soul masters. I'm not sure if there are more or less right now. I haven't checked it for a few days, but more or less around the 200 mark. So quite a, quite a lot of soul masters. And the other thing they've posted is about the 22 racing series game. Uh, which of course have a partnership with Phantasma Chain. Uh, they're actually going to this event in Australia, okay? This is called Paxos. Paxos, I think is pronounced. Uh, which is not until October, actually, right? 11th to 13th of October in Melbourne. And uh, they've received some graphics, ca graphic cards, which they're going to be using. They're going to be running a rig, apparently, as part of their competition. So that's what they're trying to do. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. And again, I will be covering information on mainnet as soon as it's out. Of course, I'm not going to miss that. Uh, probably not like in the first few minutes, right? Because maybe I'm at work. Who knows uh, when it's actually going to launch. But as soon as I find out about it, I'm going to do a video. Uh, and as soon as I have the possibility, of course, uh, to share it with you. But you'll probably already know when you go to their Telegram channel because everybody will be hyped and talking about it. And you know how it is, right? There'll be a lot of retweets going on and the community is really eager for this. They've been waiting a long time, right, since April. Uh, so yeah, 30th of September is the deadline. It's going to happen. Could it be tomorrow? Could it be this weekend? I don't believe it's going to be on Sunday, in my opinion, right? But I, it could be tomorrow. It could just take us all by surprise or maybe Monday. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, and let's move on and talk a little bit about Ontology. So Ontology have announced uh, that they've signed an MOU with global masternode platform called Apis 11 Official. 
two sides will work together to collaborate in technology, new services and network expansion. So you can find out more information on this about the global masternode. But something interesting that I found as well here, and this was posted uh, first on the 22nd of September and then the 24th is how to write a smart contract on ontology using Python, which is a programming language used for scripting and also coding in general, like uh, um, for programs, right? For blockchain programming, for example, smart contract development and uh, development in general for software. So actually, this is really good because a lot of people have been complaining in the past that there weren't any tutorials, no information out there, how you could actually develop. So Ontology are taking that next step, which you've actually seen with Elastos as well. Elastos have done kind of the same, doing tutorials on YouTube, whereas Ontology aren't doing tutorials on YouTube, but they've got a Medium article which tells you step by step what you need to do to deploy a smart contract on Ontology using Python. So if you're a Python developer, you may be interested. Uh, but they've got part one and part two, so I'm pretty sure there's going to be a part three probably if needed. I haven't personally read it, I just quickly flicked through it and it's pretty well explained. Uh, but then the next thing is Ontology uh, are going to join a panel at La Conexion, which is in the US. Uh, it's going to be actually, no, sorry, it's in Buenos Aires. And it's uh, between the 25th and 26th of September, which is yesterday and today and uh, you can register on this website i'm not sure if you can still do so you could have gotten a free ticket if you're from buenos aires but uh, i don't believe anybody from argentina watches my channel but uh, yeah if you are from argentina and you're interested maybe you can take part if it's not too late uh, it probably is too late to be honest but uh, yeah by the time i upload this video i think it may be too late even in argentina unfortunately but uh, yeah i haven't had a chance to do the video earlier uh, but yeah, that's that about ontology. I mean, they're pushing it out there, right? They're going to events, they're trying different things. Uh, they're even writing tutorials or they're getting their community to do so. So that's also a good sign, right? Because they're really trying to, they're really trying to push the word out there. And this is what, this is the main issue at the moment that many blockchain companies and crypto companies are facing is trying to spread the word to convince people to develop dApps. Uh, on their blockchain and to adopt it because that's the biggest struggle there just aren't enough dap developers out there willing to quit their jobs just to go full-time in this uh, what if it's not a success what if it's a failure what if people don't adopt it so these are the sort of questions people ask themselves and are kind of concerned there are some people that do it part-time as a side job try their luck and they see if they see they succeed then they end up doing it full-time but not many people are willing to leave their jobs uh, just to go full-time in this so this is the struggle that uh, ontology and many other projects have to uh, tackle and have to fight with so they need to really motivate those developers and incentivize them to actually uh, start developing on their blockchain so we'll see who actually succeeds because i believe that only a handful will actually succeed and let's move on and talk about moonlight so moonlight successfully executes dlx token smart contract migration so they had some issues basically with their smart contract they had to migrate it they finally done so and because of that they weren't able to list on nash which is the exchange which I've done a demo and it's gonna be at the end of this video. Check it out if you're interested. I've done a tutorial, especially if you're from the US, you probably don't even know how it looks like because you can't access it due to a v your, uh, sorry, due to your IP address being blocked and you can't even use a VPN to connect. If you're in the US, right? Nash have actually banned US citizens completely. They know if you're trying to use a VPN so you won't be able to do so. Uh, but I've done a tutorial, so if you're from the US and you're curious how it looks like, you can actually see it in the tutorial if you haven't already watched it. Again, at the end of this video, it's going to be uh, in the last few seconds, basically, you can just click on it. But yeah, now they can list on Nash, so people are um, eager for that, right? Because I, I know that Nash is a hyped exchange. Uh, people were a bit disappointed with it at some point as well because of the lack of volume, but it may actually pick up and I'm actually trying to I'm trying to get an interview with uh, Fabio who is the CEO of Nash, but he's just a really busy guy, right? He's he's had a lot of issues with Nash. We're trying to get things up and running now the Nash exchange isn't actually working right now It's down for maintenance. I'm not sure the reason why I've checked it and it's just down for maintenance So things like that. I think they just need to sort these kind of problems first um, and then once they, they get everything sorted and they've got everything up and running, it's just a matter of listing tokens, generating liquidity and stuff like that, kind of like Switcho have been doing. Uh, but that's that about Moonlight. Let me know what you think, of course. And let's talk about Engine, blockchain gaming, one of my favorite projects too. Um, 
What did they talk about? I mean, they've been talking about Twitch, which is one of the most crucial marketing platforms for game devs, especially in this. So they've, they're having their projects uh, praised live stream. They can be indoors, needed for success, etc., etc. Uh, so here's a guide on how to achieve it. So marketing guide for game developers. They can do that on Twitch if they're interested. Um, introducing emotes, right? So this is dance on your victim's space grave. Equal parts, cruel and epic, tokenized space uh, misfits. So I'm not entirely sure what this is, but it looks like it's a game which is powered by engine. Right, so that's what it says. Actually, no, it's called, um, it's actually just emotes, right? It says here, today we want to introduce space misfits emotes and these unique emotes can be purchased in the store and will display whenever you make a kill in the game, right? So things like that. Actually, let's have a quick look at this. Okay, so it's like the space game. Okay, there they are. Right, 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 right. So that's how they look like. Pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. What sets Engine apart from other projects, right? So Vitek, who's the founder, describes the unique vision and approach. He's saying we want to make all sides of the blockchain gaming ecosystem much easier to understand and use by both developers and gamers. We want to remove as many barriers as possible and remain a neutral platform which every single game in the world could use. So of course that's what they're trying to do. Uh, but I wonder if they're going to build some partnerships at some point. I just find it a bit odd that they're going to grow all alone. But maybe they will. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're really trying to grow alone and trying to show that they can actually do it because all of these games which have been developed by uh, on using the Unity game engine have been proven uh, quite a success so far and, and the communities are, are quite big, right? The communities have over a thousand members in many cases and some of these games haven't even been launched yet, they're in alpha stage. So it just shows you the potential is out there simply because the graphics are amazing and the assets are tokenizable, right? So these things actually make um, developers uh, use it use it right use the engine platform because they can develop using uh, using uh, unity and this is what they like they probably used to doing that right but now they can make it easier for gamers so that's why right so uh, yeah this is pretty much it i mean we don't have much more information again the other thing that engine did is they've updated their website but i've already covered that in a previous video so do check that out uh, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it from today. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below and don't forget to like the video. Much appreciated and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.